Sliding Mode Control Lecture Number 4 Sliding Mode Observer and Differentiator The Matching Condition and Insensitivity Properties I am your instructor Yasser Amir Khan The book that we are following is Sliding Mode Control and Observation by Yuri and All. From our previous lectures we observed that the compensated system did not depend on the disturbance. The disturbance had no effect on the dynamics of the compensated system. We also note that the disturbance appeared in the second equation of the system. And the second equation of the system was the one where control was also applied. So disturbance was appearing in the same equation where we had control. A question arises that this very desirable property of insensitivity to the disturbance will it still hold if we have disturbance in the first equation or it, it is there in the first equation along with the disturbance in the second equation. This is a very important question. Let us consider a system given in equation 1.41. This system has two disturbances. The first disturbance, phi, which is function of state variables and time, appears in the first state equation. And the second disturbance, f, which is function of x1 and x2 and time, appears in the second state equation. And we can see that the control is applied in the second equation. Both of the disturbances are bounded. F is bounded by L and phi is bounded by P. Let us assume that there is a sliding mode control U which is designed to drive the trajectories of the system in equation 1.41 to the sliding surface phi is equal to x2 plus cx1 equal to 0 in a finite amount of time t less than the reaching time less than equal to reaching time and to maintain the motion on the surface thereafter okay we have a sliding mode control u which is designed to drive the trajectories of the system to a sliding surface in finite amount of time and maintain the trajectories on the surface the system dynamics in sliding mode can be easily derived using the equivalent control approach pre presented and discussed in the previous lectures. Now, now the reduced order motion is given by equation 1.42. By applying the sliding mode control U, the order of the system reduces. It, it was initially a second order system, now it becomes a first order system and we can see that in the first order system, we still have the disturbance, the new disturbance that is phi function of the state variables in time, it is still over there. No doubt the disturbance f is not there, it has been eliminated, removed, but the other disturbance is still there, which was in the equation where we did not have the control. The disturbance f is called a disturbance matched by the control and the disturbance phi is called an unmatched disturbance. The disturbance f does not affect the system in the sliding mode and does not appear in the reduced order system. However, the other disturbance that is phi appears in the second equation with, where control is not there. The, sec this, the disturbance phi which appears in the second equation where the control is not there will not let the state variables to converge to zero. So this disturbance is creating a problem for us. The disturbance f was matched by a control and we call it matched disturbance. The other disturbance is called unmatched disturbance and it was not removed and it will not let the state variables to converge to zero. Now a point to be noted is that 
Such a criterion for detecting matched and unmatched disturbances is valid only for CISO systems with the control U entering in only one equation. For other cases, uh, other cases will be discussed later on in later chapters. Sliding mode observer and differentiator. So far, we have assumed that both state variables x1 and x2 are measured, that is, they are available. In many cases, only x1, generally the position, is measured and x2, which is normally taken as the velocity, must be estimated. To estimate x2, we will propose an algorithm. We assume a bound on x2 is known. And let us propose an algorithm that x1 estimated's derivative is equal to nu. And we will call this nu as observer injection term. And nu is designed in such a way so as to so that estimated variables converge to the actual variables. That is the estimated variables x1 hat, x2 hat converge to the actual variables x1 and x2. Let us now introduce estimation error as an auxiliary sliding variable. Z1 is equal to the difference between estimated well state variable x1 and the actual state variable x1. Now let's differentiate this equation and using the previous uh, definition of observer injection term and the system equation we get the time derivative of z1 is equal to minus x2 plus nu let us design the injection term nu so that z1 converges to zero in finite amount of time that is the estimated variable converges to the actual variable in a finite amount of time and let us suggest an injection term as nu is equal to minus rho sine of z1 where rho is greater than mod of x2 plus beta and beta is some positive real number we have done that because in order to satisfy the reachability condition the product of z1 and the derivative of z1 which is equal to z1 multiplied by bracket minus x2 minus rho sine of z substituting them over here is always less than equal to the mod of z1 multiplied with bracket mod of x2 minus rho and which is always less than minus beta times the mod of z1 because of the definition in 1.46 like the reachability condition and the reaching time of the following equations which we have already considered in our previous lectures that is the product of sigma with the derivative of sigma is always less than equal to minus alpha divided by square root of 2 multiplied with the mod of sigma and the reaching time that is the bound on the reaching time uh, tr is always less than equal to 2 times the square root of v for t is equal to 0 divided by alpha we have already seen that previous in previous lectures now we have this equation 1.47 over here that is z1 times z1's time derivative is less than equal to minus beta times the mod of z1 which means that it's always negative definite ne negative uh, semi-definite because beta is a positive real number and mod of z is always positive and this will give us a reaching time just like we have already uh, seen above is less than equal to the mod of z at time zero divided by beta if we uh, define a Lyapunov candidate function as equal to half of z square z is the sliding variable in our case previously it was half sigma square this is the reaching time in which z1 converges to zero goes to zero or x1 hat converges to x1 the sliding mode 
exists in observer for t is greater than tr now reconsider the equation for observer that is equation 1.45 the time derivative of z1 is equal to minus x2 plus nu in this equation the sliding mode dynamics can be calculated using the concept of equivalent control which we have already studied in our previous lectures now when this slide the time derivative of the sliding variable becomes equal to zero then we can call that particular value of nu to be nu equivalent from here we get x2 is equal to nu equivalent for time greater than the reaching time as discussed earlier the injection term is estimated by low pass filtering of high frequency switching term for example we have a first order low pass filter given in equation 1.50 tau is a small positive number and is the time constant of our low pass first order filter and finally we get x2 is approximately equal to the estimated value of x2 which is equal to the equivalent value of nu for all time t greater than the reaching time now let's put all the things together first of all we have a few equations which are written over here in this slide you can see them the estimate the time derivative of estimated value of x1 is equal to nu and nu is a sort of control signal just the control signal that we had previously and this nu is equal to minus rho sine of z1 and rho is greater than mod of x2 plus beta and beta is some positive real number and then we are passing this high frequency switching term from a first order low pass filter with certain time constant and that is given in equation 1.50 and from there we get x estimated value of x2 as equal to new equivalent for all time t greater than reaching time so what is happening is that first of all we already have x1 in the beginning we said that x1 is already is al already there we wanted to estimate x2 and in order to estimate x2 what we did was that we designed a sliding auxiliary sliding variable which whose time derivative was going to zero when we applied some observer injection term as nu which is high frequency switching term minus rho sine of z1 now we are passing this high frequency switching term from a low pass filter so as to estimate the value of the effective value or the equivalent value of nu which is taking the time derivative of z1 to 0 now that value is the estimated value of x2 so in this way we find, can estimate the value of x2 and say that it is approximately equal to x2 one point to be noted is that since we are not only observing the state variable estimating the state variable we also have the equation over here the time derivative of estimated value of x1 to be equal to nu therefore we also call this differentiator we are also estimating the derivative of the state variable x1 now we have example 1.6 in example 1.6 we have the system given in equation 1.1 with the sliding mode control given in equations 1.5 and 1.19 you are encouraged to refer to your textbook the initial conditions are 1 and minus 2 for x1 at time 0 and x2 at time 0 respectively the control gain rho is 2 and the parameter c is 1.5 and the disturbance f function of the state variables and time is equal to sine 2t is used for the simulation purpose 
the variable x1 is measured and the variable x2 is estimated by using sliding mode observer which we have just discussed and for this the row over here is taken as equal to 10 and the time constant for the low pass filter is taken to be equal to 0 0.01 the simulation results are presented in the next few slides first result this first result shows the estimated x2 along with the actual x2 comparing with the actual x2 and we see that the estimated x2 converges very quickly to the actual x2 now the next slide shows that the auxiliary sliding variable z1 quickly converges towards zero in the next slide we see the state variables x1 and estimated x2 since we have already said that as we have already said that x1 is available and x2 is estimated so now in this case here we are in our sliding mode control which we have discussed previously in the examples where which where we were using sigma we, we have the sliding variable sigma as given in equation 1.5 but, but with one modification and the modification is that we have replaced x2 by the estimated value of x2 estimated x2 is used in the sigma this is the difference between this case and the previous cases now this sigma converges to zero in finite amount of time and that is t greater than one second the reaching time is one second furthermore the state variables x1 and x2 converge to zero as the time increases as you can see in this figure so the state variables we have here are x1 and the estimated x2 and despite the presence of disturbance we still have convergence of the state variables to zero so what we have done over here is that we have used a sliding mode observer to estimate x2 for us and then we have used that estimated x2 in our sliding mode control with sigma as the uh, sliding variable and we have brought the sliding we have brought the state variables down to zero despite the presence of disturbance now this next slide shows the sliding variable sigma converging down to zero after one second so this ends our lecture in the next lecture we will talk about higher order sliding modes to reach me you have my email address with you on this screen thank you